Well. To order the Enfield Planning Zone Commission on Thursday, June 9th at uh, 7.01. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Thank you. We'll do the fire evacuation announcement. In case of the fire is two ways out of the council chambers, right straight behind you, out the, the back doors here, or out these set of doors, and then down the stairs and out towards the back. And please, if there is an emergency, please walk away from the building as far as possible. Thank you. Well, the secretary uh, acting tonight is the acting secretary will be second vice chair Linda DeGray, as our secretary John Pantronella is absent tonight. So, Linda, would you please call the roll? Lou Fiore. Here. Jenny Higley. Here. Linda DeGray. Here. John Petronell absent. Frank Limo. Here. Karam Mujmadar. Fantastic. Here. <laughs> Kenneth Helinski. Here. Vinnie Grillo. Here. Chris Trent, uh, De DeAntonio. DeAntonio, thank you. Absent. Nick Lafakas. Here. Thank you. Uh, with uh, Commissioner uh, Petronella absent tonight, it is Commissioner Grillo's uh, opportunity to sit in as a full-time member tonight with Commissioner Lafakis as the backup, uh, as the alternate. Move on to the next. Approval of the minutes of the Thursday, May 26th uh, PNZ meeting. So moved. Motion made by Ch the Vice Chairman Higley, seconded by Vice Chairman DeGray to accept the minutes of the May 26th meeting. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes? Let the record show that it was uh, one, two, three, four, five, six in favor and two abstains. Commissioner Majumdar, Commissioner Lafakis abstaining from the minutes. Town Attorney's Report, as you can see, we all did receive something from the Town Attorney in, in your tonight in your packet. This is a minor little update. Now we'll move on to public participation. At this point in the meeting, the Planning and Zoning Commission welcomes comments, concerns, and opinions related to planning and zoning in Enfield from anyone who is present, provided that no one may discuss any matter of business at this time that is already elsewhere on the agenda, any matter that is part of an open public hearing of the Commission, or any matter where a decision of the Commissioner may be pending, and that includes anything that's legally pending. Is there anyone who would like to come in front of the Commission to speak tonight? Is there anyone who would like to come in front of the commission to speak tonight? For the final time, anyone would like to come in front of the commission to speak tonight? Seeing none, public participation is closed. We'll move on now to bond releases. I don't think really we need to read anything other than the first one is PH2961 Chase Bank, 10 Hazard Avenue. Would staff like to quick comment on this? Um, yeah. Um Mr. Chairman, the bond release would be for $6,222. This is just for the landscaping around the Chase Bank off of Hazard Avenue. And uh, Rick Rochelle has given you uh, ample information regarding the, this, that it, and it meets the requirements. Thank you. Is there any questions to the staff on this bond release? Seeing on there, is there a motion made to accept the release of this bond? I so make a motion to approve the release of landscaping bond in the amount of $6,222, approved under PH 2961 Chase Bank Project for property located at 10 Hazard Ave, map 056, lot 20022, owner equity one portfolio, LLC, George Papadopoulos, and YM Group Developer Representative. And motion made by Vice Chairman DeGray, seconded by Vice Chairman Higley. Any discussion on the motion? Yeah. Seeing none, Secretary, call the roll, please. Please take your time. <laughs> Not used to my new role. <laughs> uh, Lou Fiore? Four. Ginny Higley? Four. Linda DeGray? Four. Uh, Frank Limo? Four. Karam Mujmudar? Four. Ken. Kenneth Holinsky? Four. Vinny Grillo? Four. The record shows unanimous 7 nothing that will release this bond. We'll move on to the next bond release, which is PH2949, 
Baker Properties, 1559 King Street, map 017, lot 0039, another landscape bomb. Does staff like to report? Um, same as the last one, this is just a landscaping bond. Um, Rick Rochelle has provided uh, ample information for that and has claimed that it is uh, ready to go. So <laughs> that would be in the amount of $441. Big bond. Big money. <laughs> Uh, any discussion on this bond release? Motion, motion to approve the yep. release of landscaping bond in the amount of $441 approved under special permit PH2949 for property located at 1559 King Street, map 017, lot 0039 to Baker Property Limited Partnership. Motion made by Vice Chairman DeGray. Is there a second? Second, second. made by Vice uh, my Commissioner uh, Helensky. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, Secretary, please call the roll. Lou Friari? Four. Jenny Higley? Four. Linda DeGray? Four. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I am so bad at this. Okay. That was good. Frank Lima? Four. Karam Mujmajak? Four. All right. Ken Holinsky? Four. Vinny Grillo? Four. <laughs> Thank you. You're going to need this now. Do you have the legal oh. part to reeks? Oh. We're going to open up for new public hearings and just going to let the second. Okay. Yep. Right. So, Secretary, please read public hearing 3039, please. The Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission <clears throat> will hold a public hearing at the regular meeting on Thursday, June 9th, 2022, at 7 p.m. in the Town Hall Council Chambers at 820 Enfield Street, Enfield. Connecticut concerning the following application PH 3039 53 Nealon Road application for the expansion of a non conforming structure Peter Falk ap applicant Peter and Karen Falk owner map 86 lot 8283 R88 zone. Thank you. Would the applicant and representative care to come forward, please? <clears throat> I have to tell you, I put the car on automatic pilot, it came right here. <laughs> <laughs> lived in, oh, Peter Fall, 53 Neelands Road. I've lived in town for, I don't know, 50 years, 25 of them up there somewhere. <laughs> so, anyway, um, I did want to say uh, thank you to all of you for your uh, uh, getting me on the agenda so quickly and for the uh, uh, time that you spend here doing this, because I having been there. I, I know it takes a lot of time and energy, and not everybody has that kind of time, so thank you very much. Uh, obviously, I'm here because I want to add a garage. Uh, for 50 years now, I've been out in the winter shoveling that snow off the car, and I'm getting to the point now where it's becoming more physically difficult for me to do that, so I would like to be able to park in a garage so I don't have to go out and do that. And same with my wife. Uh, we all have our health issues, so um, that, that's the, uh, the issue. Uh, anyway, uh, about a year ago, this process started, uh, and finally I hired an architect that drew these beautiful plans. I don't know if you have. It was a digital copy. I don't know if you got it to him or not. The, uh, the architect had actually locked the PDF, so we, right. we couldn't get to those. But they are, we'll make sure they're in the file. Yeah. And they are beautiful. By the way. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it took me uh, two months to get those drawings, so it's been dragging out. Then I had a hard, hard time finding a, uh, a builder who was willing to do it at a reasonable price. Finally got the builder, got those beautiful drawings, submitted them to the building department, and you're living in an R88 district, and you have to go get a special use permit and public hearing and all this other stuff, which I hadn't planned on. Um, by the way, when that development was built, or, or let's just say approved, it was in the late 1950s. And I'll refer to it as an R17 open space subdivision. So the lots are smaller than 17,000 square foot, they're 12,500 square foot. So somewhere along the line, the Planning and Zoning Commission, uh, our forefathers decided they wanted to save all this beautiful land along the Scantic River Valley. So they did a carte blanche. All this property is now rezoned R88, regardless of what it is, it's R88 now. And I, and I have to tell you, 
I've lived there 50 years. I water my yard and I fertilize the yard and somehow that lot just hasn't gotten any bigger. It's still a quarter of an acre after all these years. So the fact that it's zoned R88 makes it impossible to do anything. I can't even sneeze without a variance. <laughs> so it just doesn't make sense that that development in particular, or my house in particular, goes through all this red tape for something that I had no, you know, nothing to do with. It was dumped in my lap. So um, I'm hoping that you will support me in this effort so I can build a garage. Um, and my wife and I can live a, a more relaxed life as opposed to trying to go out in the winter and do all the stuff in the driveway and we're just too old for that now. So uh, that's my issue. That's what I'm proposing and I hope that I have your, uh, your approval. Do you have any questions you'd like to ask me? Is there any questions of the commission? No. To Mr. Falk? The only question I have, uh, Mr. Fox, good to see you, by the way. Yeah, thanks. Pete and I did surf together for a few years. So, Pete, are you, you are familiar with one of the conditions that are, are, in, the, are in this application, I believe. Well, I, I, I uh, highlighted that. I yeah. have it all marked up in red. Yeah, the only yellow. one I just, I just wanted yellow. to bring. Which one are you concerned with? Well, I, just wanted, I just wanted to bring to your attention, it was number 18, so that you are you know, fully aware that um, the final plan shall be revised as follows. The site plan shall be revised to show the correct front back, show the existing shed, the scale, eliminate reference to accessory apartment, and to eliminate the call out of the 15 row shoulder, provide well, a zone and compliance table noting existing conditions. I'm, I'm not gonna read the whole thing, yeah, but I just I, wanted to make a point that 18 yeah. has to be, you know, has to be fulfilled. Well, being that I didn't plan on having a public hearing, the only drawing I have is this one I did in pencil. Yeah, I know. So if this is okay, then I, I guess I'm good with that because I didn't feel that I needed to hire an architect. I would have to re redesign my garage too, the way it yeah. would connect if it's yeah. back 35 feet or whatever that distance is. Um, and let's just say that uh, if I can just mark this up and that constitutes uh, revised uh, uh, setback, show the, uh, the shed. By the way, I submitted a revised drawing. I don't know which one you have. Mine is dated uh, uh, 6 1. I think the one that, that Matt put in the packet might have been 520. I'm not sure which one you put in there. Yeah, I'll just explain. Um, yeah. They do have the earlier plan. And what had happened was um, we wanted to expedite this for Pete and his family. So typically we would have done these revisions prior to getting to the hearing mm -hmm. stage. But in order to get on this docket and get the legal notice done, you know, 10, 15 days before the meeting, all that type of stuff, um, we took a little bit of a different approach and we included the revisions in the motion. Okay. So we'll, we'll take care of this stuff post-approval, <clears throat> assuming okay. it gets approved. That's, so that's why things are a little okay. janky. Okay, no problem. I, I think Mr. Fock understands that too, and it sounds like staff wants to work with him to get this done. Yeah, absolutely. These are fairly minor yeah. changes. Okay. Uh, the providing a zoning compliance table. I didn't create those drawings, so I, I, you know, I don't have any of that. This is what I have. This this picture that I had drew. Staff will work with you. Once yeah. If you if you're approved, staff yeah. will work yeah. with you with the minor details. Yeah. I think that's and what provide a scaled floor plan. Well, this isn't drawn to scale by any means, right. but it's right. close. Right. I think what you heard, Ms. Fock, is staff is willing to work with yeah. you after, with this. We, we need to keep these conditions in there. I just wanted to bring it to your attention. I, you know, I just wanted to know you that there is some variation to these conditions that, that if you're willing to make them, fine. Okay. I have no objection to them. There's all this other stuff I highlighted in yellow. This is boilerplate stuff yeah. that has Rest absolutely all nothing to do with me. <laughs> right. It's all boilerplate. Most of it's boilerplate. Yeah. Any other questions for Mr. Fock? No. Does staff have any more comments they want to uh, make on this? Uh, no, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Is there a motion to close this public hearing? So moved. Motion Second. made by. Well, you got to let the public say oh, something. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As you can see, Mr. I withdraw my motion. As you can see, Mr. Fox sat up here for many years. So, <laughs> thank you, Peter. Okay. Is there anyone who'd like to speak for or against this application? There's somebody who just a couple of years ago got approved to build an additional two-car garage. Yeah. You can't talk from the audience. Talk. If you'd like to come, you have to come up. Oh, I have to talk. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how. The, I, I don't know Mr. Falk, but having lived please in the Please, you got to identify yourself for the oh, record, sorry. please. Robin Myers. 
174 Post Office Road. Thank you. So I, I, I know how hard it was for my husband and I to go and get our garage done. My stepfather also moved from Illinois here. He did a garage. I mean, I honestly, it's something great. You need to have it. The elderly need to have it. Just, you know, I hope you guys allow him to do it. You allowed me to do it. My husband and I have been thrilled. And I'll just, I don't see any problem with it. Okay, thank you very much. Anyone else like to speak for or against this application? Anyone else like to speak for or against this application? Anyone else like to speak for or against this application? Okay. Seeing none. Motion to close the public hearing was made by Vice Chairman DeGray, seconded by Vice Chairman Higley. All those in favor of closing the public hearing? Aye. 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 So the record shows your names. Close the public hearing. Is there a motion? Any other questions or comments among ourselves? Yes. Seeing none. Is there a motion to approve? Uh, make a motion to approve PH 3039 with conditions and modifications. Application for a special permit to construct a single story two car attached garage at 53 Neilan Road. Peter and Karen Falk, owner applicant, map 86, lot 283, R88 zone, per the referenced plans and application materials dated received May 20th, 2022, with the following. 23. 23 conditions. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by uh, Commissioner Alimo. Any discussion on the approval? No. Seeing none, Secretary, whenever you're ready, roll call vote, please. And I will say what I decide. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lou Fiore? Four. Ginny Higley? Four. Linda DeGray? Four. Uh, Frank Alimo? Four. Karam Majmudar? Four. Ken Holinsky? Four. Vinny Grillo? Four. The record shows unanimous seven nothing for approval for this uh, special use permits. Good luck, Mr. Fock. Thank you. You're welcome. By the way, it was um, a pleasure working with these people. They're very accommodating. <laughs> Work with me. Unfortunately, we were under a tight time frame and we couldn't resolve all the issues for prior. So I do thank them for that. Thank you. Thank you. Hope you feel better. Pardon me? Hope you feel much better looking at oh, yeah, I have uh, skin cancer all over the place. They took a chunk out of my ear, so a few weeks before I get rid of this. <laughs> well, good luck with that. Thanks. Thank all right, we have to open back up this public hearing. Secretary, please read the application. We'll reopen this hearing. We don't have to. Oh, we don't have to? No. We're going to reopen hearing PH 3036, uh, 33 Palumba Drive. Mm -hmm. We left the public hearing open last time, so if the applicant or the representative care to come forward. <coughs> so this is just a continuation of the two weeks ago. So we're, we're back here again um, to try, hopefully wrap this up tonight. Um, do you have anything else you, you'd like to add at this point? Not at this time. Would staff want to add anything as an update? No, pretty much pro forma based on the last hearing that we had we added in uh, the conditions that we agreed to and you have those in the staff memo so we don't have anything further to add so i mean you so I mean, you clearly you want i'm reading that I, i've got a lot of highlights in your application yeah because there are quite a few conditions that basically uh, lack of a better term require you to change the name and paperwork of of the facility so you clearly understand what all Correct. these conditions are okay yes just want just wanted to make sure yes any, any other discussion or questions from anybody other commissioners? Yeah. Staff, anything else they want to add to this one? Not me, no. no. Oh, actually, I do. Yeah. Have, Commissioner Holinsky? I had forgotten. Uh, has any anything been done about the, the crossing situation, people crossing the road? Do we hear anything back from traffic at all? No, I don't. I was I was out for a little while. I'm not sure if we actually even sent that inquiry I'm just curious, you know, to them yet. But it up, I know it's on our list. I mean, that's not a deal breaker for me. I just okay. Just am okay. concerned about the situation. No, I think we intend to get you some feedback on that. Okay. Okay. Seeing that, is there anyone in the public who would like to speak for or against this application? Is there anyone in the public who would like to speak for or against this application? Is there anyone in the public who would like to speak for or against this application? Commissioners are all set. Take a motion to close the public hearing. Staff, we are all set? So moved. It's a motion made by Com uh, Vice Chairman Higley, seconded by Vice Chairman DeGray to close the public hearing. All those in favor? Aye. 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 
Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve PH 3036 with conditions and modification application for a special permit for used car sales at 33 Paloma Drive, the by center of N of Enfield. Applicant Man Man Set Help Mansion Mansion. Okay, LLC owner Map. 57 lot 343 per the reference plans and application material dated as noted um, below and with the 28 uh, conditions. Motion made by Secretary DeGray. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Herlinski. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, whenever the Secretary is ready, roll call vote. Lou Fury. Four. Virginia Higley. Four. Linda DeGray. Four. Frank Limo. Four. Karam Mudge Mudar. Why abstain? I wasn't here at the first okay. hearing of this matter. All right. Okay. Uh, abstain. Ken, okay. Ken Helinski. Four. Uh, Vinny Grillo. Four. The records show there was uh, six affirmative and one abstentions. You're all set. Thank you. Very good. Okay, now we'll move on to new business. Um, number A, SPR 1893-1706 King Street. I'll give you a break, I'll read it. Application for a change of use to a self-storage warehouse facility. Josh Sullivan, applicant, Burlington Co. Factory Warehouse Corporation's owner, Map 14, Lot 26, I-1 Zone. We're representative or yes. owner representative? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of Christian, uh, I'm Attorney Thomas Fahey, 487 Spring Street, Windsor Locks. I represent the applicant. I think you have in your package um, uh, a com actually a complete package that was including the staff reports attached to it was our narrative of all our uh, all of the uh, site plan requirements and how we address them, and uh, we've reviewed the uh, uh, the conditions all the different conditions that are on there. And uh, we don't really have a formal presentation because I think we've set it all in the documents and we're more than happy to answer any specific questions that you may have as a result of the application. Thank you. I mean, you've been here for a couple times now, so I think we're familiar with the app. Yeah. Is the commission any questions for the applicant? No, Commissioner Marginar? Yeah, it's not for the applicants, more for the staff. Uh, the parking's available there, existing parking, there are too many spaces there. Do we really need that many for the use that they're proposing, storage? They, certainly not, um, okay. but we can't require them to take them out. Not to uh, no, I'm not suggesting. I'm just asking. No, no. If anything, there's a plethora of them. So right. All right. Yeah. Thank you. I just wanted to know yeah. because I know there's a lot too many spaces over there. They're overgrown, and in order for you to maintain them, it'll cost you a lot more to maintain them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just, just so that you with planning and right. zoning, I just understood that we have to um, address because we're on Route Five. Um, and the uh, original <coughs> approval when it was cohos and uh, got it they got a certificate from what they then called the state traffic commission which is now called asta office of state traffic administration or something like that uh, and then when burlington came in they had they amended the certificate to comply with the specific requirements were for burlington both of which were in excess of 200 spaces and we only need 56. Yeah. So um, we're going to be addressing that with ASTA because we, we have less than 100 square thousand square feet and we have we need less than 200 spaces. So we don't really think they have jurisdiction, but we'll address they may um, they may make us require a formal uh, application to explain to them what we're doing and may, they'll may make they may make us uh, maybe uh, unstripe the spaces, uh, you know, or, or, or offense them or even put like, what do they call it, a genite coating. And we don't know what they're going to do, but hopefully they'll, um, they'll tell from our application that we'll never need, as, as long as it stays as a, uh, the use that we intended to stay, which is uh, you know, air controlled uh, indoor public storage, we're not going to need any more than 56. And I think we documented that with yeah. the Vanass uh, traffic study in the report. 
but I appreciate your comment, and uh, we understand that. But you know, they, all they see is an, at the state is a certificate that says it's 456 spaces, and uh, that triggered their recall. But any, anytime you have property on that, 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 it's automatically triggered if you have spark parking spaces like that, and you're on a state road, and then you just have to go in and give them the details. Right, it's just too many, and you lot more cost to maintain. Oh, absolutely, it. Yeah. block it off and let it do what it wants. Hey, to we're do. on your side, 100. <laughs> <laughs> percent Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner yeah. Lamo. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I, I know I see it, and I think I'm right. I just want to make sure. So this building itself sits in two different towns, right? Yes. The town line runs right through the building. Right through it. There's a, a diagram in there. It runs, yeah. Uh, yeah. I just want to make sure I'm seeing what I'm seeing. <laughs> no, it's I've never heard of that. Because uh, I don't know. It's interesting because this, the ZBA in uh, back 40-something uh, years ago, I think it's in one of the preliminary reports, um, approved the variance here and in uh, East Windsor. Uh, the interesting thing is why it got built uh, and I think why it got built in the way it did, right straddling straight line, you know, uh, probably could never happen today. No, I don't think so. No. <laughs> uh, so just do you have, now as part of this application, you have to go to East Windsor too. Yeah, we're there already. In fact, their uh, their meetings are a little different. They they've um, uh, we didn't need to get a zone change in uh, East Windsor, and they they've had a, their initial um, receipt of our application mm -hmm. and the, the uh, actual. Uh, uh, next, uh, the 14th, which is what, next uh, Thursday, maybe? Okay. What's today? Today's the 10th. Uh, Tuesday, I guess it would be. No. Yeah, that's when that we're on the agenda here for our approval for the site plan. That is really interesting. Yeah. yeah. Town, so, it, it, so, it, so does the, the, the towns fight over the tax? Do they move the line for the taxes each year? They, they, they get a little argument going, move the property? Well, they, each, <laughs> they, they do it proportionally. About one-third of the building is in uh, Enfield. Wow. And two-thirds in uh, East Windsor. That is and interesting. The, the fire marshals, uh, they were both at the uh, lawyer. They were both there. <laughs> they were both at the initial uh, ART meeting. And they, I, I can tell you, I talked to uh, Ed Shirley just yep. the other day, and they've been on top of it from the beginning in terms of wow. you know, all the issues that are, uh, that are there. They, uh, That's a real interesting piece of information. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. And if, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, East Windsor is already industrial, that part. No, it's, just no, it's not. Yeah. It's not. Sorry. Okay. No, it's not industrial. Oh, it's but not. They, they, they didn't require any. Uh, they just it's still a, a variance, and they considered it's pretty. You know, they considered that the use that we were doing was okay under the okay. old uh, uh, okay. variance. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner uh, Just one thing, because we just got an update on our. Um, Table tonight. It says additional fire hydrants will be required. There's three shown on the drawing. Uh, through the chairman to staff, could you help me out on that? This was the fire department comments. It says size of water main not shown. It was on our desk tonight. That's right. Yeah, Georgie, I think, updated the memo okay. due to the I don't call it late. I don't want to call it tardy. I don't want to be dismissive. So we that to, that was included in there. I don't know if she provided a copy. Yeah, we to have that. to do all that prior to getting a CO. Okay, I just wanted to make sure you were aware. Yeah, of we're that. very much aware of it. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay, I missed that one. Any other questions? Does staff, have any more comments they want to add on this one? No, no Mr. Chairman. Is there a motion to approve? I make a motion to approve SPR 1893-1706 King Street application for a change of use to a self-storage warehouse facility. Jo uh, Josh Sullivan, applicant, Burlington Coat Factory owner, map 14, lot 26. I-1 zone per the referenced plans, reports, and applica application materials dated May 11th, 2022 as may be amended and will, with the following conditions of approval, which is 24. Yeah. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Discussion? Yes. Yeah. Discussion. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So which, um, which uh, no, we, revised we, we, that? Which we, report are we putting in the record? The one that was on our desk tonight? or Yes. Yes. Okay, so not the one in our packet. No. Okay. No. Yeah, it says yes. at the top, it says uh, revised. There's just some yeah. confusion about which yeah. paperwork here. Well, they actually, okay. 
Okay. I just want to make sure. Yeah, we're not discussing know. the application. You're just discussing which piece. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which piece there of paper you, you want? Okay. The one that was on the desk, right? What's there a second? I'm sorry, I didn't get that. No, no. Yeah, there was. Okay. Ken did. Uh, Ken did. Yep. Ken Linsky. Oh, oh. Okay. You're all set. Yeah. Yeah. So second, the one that's on the desk. The one that's okay. on the desk. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. All right. Motion's been made and seconded. No discussion. Roll call vote whenever you're ready, Madam Secretary. Uh, Lou Fiore. Four. Jenny Higley. Four. Linda DeGray. Four. Frank Alimo. Four. Karam Mudjmadar. Four. Ken Holinsky. Four. Vinny Grillo. Four. The record shows unanimous decision. We're all set. Mr. Thank Faith. you very much, Mr. Thank Chairman you. and the staff. Next, we're moving on to SPR 1894-20 North Street application for a special event. Robin Myers, applicant. Lutheran Church of Our Redeemer, owner of MAP 83, lot 356, R33 zone. Would the applicant or the representatives care to come forward? Good evening. Can you please identify yourselves for the record, please. Robin Myers, 174 Post Office Road. Jane Murray, 151 North Street, Enfield. I'm sorry, we couldn't hear you. Could, yeah. Sorry, 51 North Street, Enfield, Jane Murray. Thank you. Could you please just briefly outline what your request is? Uh, we're basically we do a fundraiser for a car show. So this year our fundraiser is going to Ukraine for our Lutheran mission over there to feed the hungry, clothing, whatever their necessities are. So this is just for a benefit to help our people overseas. What, this is our fourth year of doing that. Tell us when. Um, it's the 25th of June. You know, let me recognize people on the table, please. Uh, this is our fourth year, fourth year of doing it. So. Okay. Is there any questions from the commission? Commissioner DeGray. I just wanted a little bit more information about your benefits. You're having a car show on when and it's how June, many cars? June 25th, it's from 10 to 2, well, 10 to 3. Um, we do raffles, 50-50. Um, we do the burgers and hamburgers to help all the funds, as I said, everything we collect, except for obviously the fee we had to pay for tonight, which put us in the hole, um, then all those funds will go overseas to help people Is there in a desperate specific needs. specific type of car? Because I know anything. there's anything. Yeah, as long as it's a semi car show, I mean, I mean, we try to make sure people have something that's show worthy. Okay. Um, Thank you. Done. Any other questions from the commissioners? Any questions from or concerns from staff on, on this application? No. Is there Yes. You've had yeah, this I before. Actually, but it was like, that's why I was a little surprised. It's the first year that we've yeah. ever been told. And I, you know, I, the fee, yes. After calling around to some other towns, the permit here is. A little bit more. Yeah. yeah. Most towns are under 100, and we, 220 was a big hit. A big hit. Okay. Commissioner Higley? I have a suggestion. Mm -hmm. um, going forward, if you have it every year, and you know you're going to have it, like, say, the last Saturday in June, if you come next year with an application for a car show for the last Saturday in June of each year, you wouldn't have to come back again. How do I do that? Pardon me? Just a zoning permit. So I think we explained that to you that once once you've applied for this uh -huh. and it's been approved and it's the, and right. it's the yeah. same thing every year, you don't have to come back. Right. Okay. And Commissioner Grillo? Just a quick question. Mm -hmm. Do you, are you charging for the car show? Or is it it's a $10 donation? It's $10 a car for them to come in. Yeah. The $10 donation that they put at the window, as I said, goes to everything over, you know, for our cause and how do these people get in touch with you no it's done right at the registration at the gate right at the gate that's how they're the doing it so the only fee yep. is for the people who are showing their cars okay i only ask because i love car shows and i'll be there come on down that's all. <laughs> <laughs> just making sure thank you commissioner limo through the chair the yep. staff laurie um is there any kind of system or mechanism in place seeing that what this is and what it's for can we reimburse the fee no? No. Okay. No. Thank you. Any other questions? Any, any uh, comments from staff? I think I already asked that, but I'll ask again. No. 
Seeing none, is there a motion to approve? I make a motion uh, to approve SPR 1894 20 North Street, applicant to permit a special event, Robin Myers applicant, uh, Lutheran Church of Our Redeemer, owner, map 83, lot 365, R33 zone. Thank you. With five, five conditions. Five. Is there a second? Second. Motion made by Secretary DeGray, uh, seconded by Vice Chairman Higley. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, roll call vote, please. Uh, Lou four. Fiore? Four. Virginia Higley? Four. Linda DeGray? Four. Frank Alimo? Four. Karam Mudjmudar? Four. Ken Holinsky? Four. Vinnie Grillo? Four. The record shows you unanimous, seven nothing. You're, you're all set. You're, Thank you. Good luck Thank with, you. Your, Thank you. with your event. Maybe we'll see some of you there. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Whoa, I think that uh, Lori's going to be right on here. All right, moving on to the next SPR 1894 20 North Street application for a special event. Colby Webb, applicant, owner, Paramount Commons at Enfield LLC, map 45, lot 8, BR zone. Good evening. Hello, so, good Mr. Evening. Chairman, I just want to uh, correct it. It was yep. 1896, just for the record. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, my typo on my part. Yes, thank you very much. 1896. Please you identify yourself for the record. My name is Colby Webb. I am at 25 Hazard Avenue, which is an address to a lot of places. Um, I'm the owner operator of Chick-fil-A here in Enfield, Connecticut. Hi, Mr. Webb. Could you please uh, kind of explain generally what you're uh, requesting? So uh, this summer we are doing something a little bit more unique um, and a lot of different things. I've been here for about a year um, as the uh, new owner and operator of Chick-fil-A at Enfield, um, officially one year, uh, actually last month. Um, and one of our core missions is to be a home away from home. And so part of our things within the community is uh, every single month we partner with different organizations uh, for give back opportunities. Um, this summer, we're trying to partner with uh, an organization called ERFC, uh, Educational Resources for Children, Inc., um, here in town. Um, and essentially, we're just raising school supplies. Um, um, and we'll be doing that over three different events this summer, hopefully. Um, and we're doing that by using the resource and basically doing some outdoor movies at the actual store. Um, the current plan is July 8th, um, 28th, and I believe August 9th, if I remember my dates correctly. Um, the current plan right now is to basically, on July 28th, we'll be shutting the store down earlier, but the other nights, we'll actually be turning services like drive through and other things off. Uh, we'll advertise that beforehand. Um, and the, the thought process is that we'd basically be using our parking lot um, to actually host an outdoor movie, um, having a company that will set up all that um, stuff for us. Uh, of course, all the movies will be copyrighted. Um, they'll be extremely family oriented uh, from that from that standpoint. Um, as well. And so there's no charge uh, to come to the event at all. Um, however, we will ask for in kind if people want to bring a pack of pencils or a, a backpack or something like that. Um, it's kind of like a fill the bus, so to speak, without the bus um, type of concept. So that's that's the process. We're planning on starting the movies right around 8, 8.30. It just depends on dawn uh, and settings around that. Um, we are planning on facing the screen, everything kind of away from Hazard Avenue, so there's no distractions uh, to drivers kind of coming by. Uh, we will be blocking off the parking lot, having signage. There's additional parking kind of around the facility at that kind of night, usually not as much traffic um, on the facility itself compared to lunchtime at Chick-fil-A. Uh, we all know that's always a fun time. Um, and so um, that's the current plans um, for the movie nights um, and kind of the, the overall purpose of the events. Thank you. Questions from the commissioners on this special event? Commissioner Higley. It's not a question, it's an observation. You've answered all my questions. It's well thought out, and I think it's great that you're doing that as Chick-fil-A. Thank you. Appreciate that. Any other questions from the commission? Commissioner Majmandar. Yeah, the 24 by 16 foot screen is a huge screen. It's a big screen. Pretty and good size. That's what it says, 24 by 16 foot inflatable screen yes sir yeah how do they hold it up just the air pressure or is there some other structure that's going to hold it up 
Great question. There's actually no permanent structure or even much of a temporary one. Since it's inflatable, um, it's pretty light. Um, even if it fell on someone, I'm pretty sure it wouldn't hurt them. Um, and so what we're doing is we're actually setting that screen up um, in, in kind of a natural barrier zone, being the actual drive-through. Um, there's, a, there's a clear kind of separation uh, between the drive-through and where the audience will actually be sitting. And so there's a given probably right at probably 18 to 20 feet front and uh, behind it. All of the equipment is going to be rear projection on the movie itself. There's, there's no going to be no equipment in the parking lot around uh, the guest. I'm not saying. Um, the screen is... Um, we did kind of a mock-up of seeing how what it would actually look like, the size of it. Um, we actually think it's going to be potentially smaller than what it feels like. 24 by 16 actually doesn't get you a very big screen. Um, but for, for lawn chairs and things like that, it's, it's adequate. Um, it's good size without being too overwhelming. Right. So it's not going to be an obstruction for any other activities taking place within the plaza. No, sir. Because there are a lot of other tenants and stores no sir not uh we don't have any concern around that one the the other thing that's that's quite nice is there's a natural retaining wall um, coming down by the drive through as well um right there and so the thought process is if we have speakers coming back a this, the sound is not being directly directional towards hazard uh, hazard ave if i can speak my words correctly the other thing is there's a natural barrier of buildings behind right. um and so we don't it's not going to be some kind of party fest or block party or anything like that by any means, uh, but something moderate where the speakers are kind of facing inwards um, for the crowd. Thank you and wish you good. Yes, sir. Any other questions for commissioners? Commissioner Lamo? Just to follow up on what Karen was saying, you mentioned the structure. Um, so under any of the department's health, I mean, building, health, fire, police, we have no comments here at all on a line of public safety. So I, would, I think we'd have something. Nothing, right? No comment. Right. So I'm saying, you know, it made me look again after K Ron raised that issue okay. of the safety of the screen. But it looks like that we're good to go here as far as anything else. Building department, traffic, police don't have any comments. Yes, sir. Thank you. Well, my only question is I don't see anything here from Paramount whether they have agreed to this. There's no, there's no letter of approval from the owners of the actual. So we did provide that in the original application. Uh, we also have a letter that we brought by as well. I have, well, I have your letter. Yeah, they, they, we have the letter of authorization. You do? Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you, staff. Okay, fine. We just don't have okay. it in our packet. <laughs> I know that was an important part of the application. Yes, it is. That's why um, I was looking for it. But okay, so, thank yes, you. Yes, sir. We do that from that from okay. Paramount. That's a pretty big okay. piece. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Any other questions from the yes, applicant? Mr. Chair? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Could you, could you just kind of enlighten me a bit on the perimeter of the area? and how it's protected. It, my, my concern is somebody driving across the parking lot will not realize there's a movie going on and would drive into that area. Yes, sir. So if you look on the plan itself um, that we have out there, which is probably nothing more than some stick drawing type things, right now the, the, there are two main entrances to the majority of the property. Um, one of them being the main entrance where drive-through traffic is not all um, oncoming traffic comes into the property. That one right now, we're planning on blocking the physical entry with a big Chick-fil-A catering van um, to actually block the entry there. There will be signage um, telling everyone in um, other kind of marketing saying, hey, our drive through is going to be shut down. We'll shut that down about an hour before we kick off any type of, of event. Also to allow us to clear the actual parking lot as well. On the exit itself, we will have some stanchion barriers as well, as well as some team members out there just make sure no one tries to come into the parking lot. Um, and then there will be stanchions as well. We actually already have them out there blocking the exit of the drive through I'm not going to put it past anyone that wants to maybe drive the opposite way through the drive through <laughs> Sorry, I'm just saying it could happen. Um, so that'd be the, the third way. There is natural curbing um, and everything all the way around the other perimeter that would keep a vehicle from um, going through there. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Any other questions from the commission? Any questions for staff or comments from staff I'd like to add in this application? No, other than thank you for letting us know the letter, you have the letter in your file. Thank you. 
Sino. Is there a motion to approve? I make a motion to approve SPR 1896 25 Hazard Ave. Applicant to permit a special event. Colby Webb applicant, Paramount Realty owner, map 45, lot 8, BR zone. Is there a second? Second. Second. Motion made by Secretary, Vice Chairman DeGray, <laughs> seconded by Vice Chairman Higley. Any discussion on the motion? I think it's a great S idea. Yep. Seeing none, roll call vote, please, Madam Secretary. Lou Fiore. Four. Jenny Higley. Four. Linda DeGray. Four. Frank Alimo. Four. Karam Mudjmudar. Four. Ken Holinsky. Four. Vinny Grillo. Four. Four. The record show was unanimous, seven uh, nothing for this application. Good luck with the, the events for the three times. Good luck. Thank with you. It. Take care. Oh, just give me a second, guys. My mouth is dry. You're going to have Jurassic World. I know. We got to go. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we're on. Yeah. We're on. All right. Yes, please keep the. Not to be. All right, guys, let's keep the conversation down, please. I'm going to move on to old business. There isn't any old business. We'll move on to other business. Let's pick up. Excuse me, discussions on the size limits for warehouse slash distribution centers. Sorry, tongue tied with the can I just had. Um, as you can see tonight, staff did provide us with some more information on the, in, uh, on the table. And basically, um, one of the things I was actually going to ask for the table, the table for industrial and industrial park districts, they showed us basically what would potentially be the only change to the table there, which is basically SP for special use permit. They also gave some warehouse size comparisons across Enfield. Some more information for us. And of course, um, to pick up um, where we left off last time, because I know um, Karan was not here. Um, Karan, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of losing track of meeting dates a little bit. I'm not sure. You weren't here last time where we did talk about um, what Windsor was doing. I'm not sure if you picked up some of the comments uh, after you come back from vacation. Yeah, I did. Okay, so I don't have to go through that with you. You did, you did hear about those. Okay, thank you. Just wanted to make sure you were up to date on that. Yeah. Um, Staff would like to add anything on that? Um, yeah, so, yeah, Mr. Chairman and Commission. So I'd reached out to Windsor. I uh, called and emailed the town planner there to try to figure out where they were coming up with those ratios for the trailer parking and the loading docks. Um, we'd never, like Matt and I had discussed it, we'd never seen anything like that before. Unfortunately, we, we did not get any response. So I don't know whether this was something that was new that they found, or maybe it's been in their regulations since the 50s. I have no idea. So um, since I wasn't getting anywhere that way, I did reach out to um, Krog, and they had the ITE manual for traffic generation, and and uh, they basically said that you know they don't they have no idea where they got that from. They said maybe New Haven. But I hadn't had a chance to, to call down there. But um, you know, they said that basically all the IT manual comes calls for is gross floor area or number of employees. So, as a quick fix, I, I recommend that we just go to Krog with this with a minor text amendment saying that any where, wholesale warehousing and distribution facility 200,000 square feet or greater will require a special permit. We're going to be doing our regulations. We could always modify it, but it will protect us now, rather than trying to keep finding these different ratios and things like that. You know, people people are concerned. We don't believe that there's anything out there that you know looking here to come, but this will give us protection, and we could send it to Krog tomorrow. Thank you. I, I, before I, I, one thing, I just like to thank you very much for that for that input and that suggestion. One of the things, I, if you don't mind, if I just can, I, I, then I'll get to you, Karan, if I may. Um, actually, two things. I, I do want to get back to one of your requests because you weren't here last meeting, so I want to answer one of your requests, too, if I may. So let me do that first, if I can. Karan, one of the things that came up when you weren't here last meeting was, and I think originally you asked for, a, 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 try to attempt to get an inventory. Yeah. And one of the things that we discussed in, um, prior to and at the meeting last week is, Basically, we are talking about predominantly 
all the industrial land, and, and, you know, even though it's somewhat scattered around town, predominantly in the Moody Road, Elm Street area. And not the staff couldn't come up with that with that inventory, but it really, no offense, doesn't really kind of make any sense for what we're trying to do because I'll give you an example. Um, right now, I'll use myself as an example, just hypothetical. Um, if I wanted to develop a, a large building, 200,000 feet or more, I could go up and I could buy two or three or four small lots and come in here and merge them. So I, we decided not to go through with that inventory you want to, because basically we're looking at that whole piece, not each individual lot, because someone could buy them and merge them. So that was the, I just want to get back to it, because I know you asked for that the last time you were here. It makes sense, yes. Yeah, so that's why we decided to have staff not go through that. Yeah. And, and I wanted to let you know that. Thank you. The other thing I'd like to mention is um, one of the things I picked up, because I did read, read through everything in our, our, our working POCD document that we're still working, and I will hopefully have for everybody in September. I read through everything, and I did pick up something that's in here that I thought was very interesting that I wanted to share with everyone. Again, this is, you guys haven't approved the POCD yet, but I, I wanted to read it because this is right now, this is in the one we're working on, and I, I thought it would be beneficial to go through this tonight. So if I may read this. Um, in our natural resource protection and land conservation section, it's already been identified that many of the sensitive areas are along the Connecticut and Scanic rivers. However, sensitive areas are also clustered around the Elm Street and Moody Road area, where there are town-owned facilities and commercial development. These natural features, habitats, and sensitive areas require special attention and protection whenever possible. So I just wanted to get you feel so at least where, where I'm coming from, and I think maybe a couple other members are coming from. And I'll keep going. The Town of Enfield and Planning and Zoning Commission should develop programs and policies aimed at ensuring these sensitive areas are considered and protected whenever possible. When development does occur in these sensitive areas, it is important to ensure that proper site planning and construction practices reduce impacts to the extent possible. And I'm not going to go through everything else, but I just want to let you know my thought process, and I think a couple others, because that's like, it's kind of like in the area generally where we're talking about. And we'll be discussing this again with POCD as we go in the September time frame, but I just wanted to let you know where, where, what I, where I was coming from, if it's beneficial to everyone. So I know you had a question, Karan. Yeah, the question I had was we, uh, this says over 200,000 square feet will require a special permit. The special permit gives the commission slightly more flexibility compared to plain old site plan review. Yes, absolutely. And the CROG has or will have the authority to approve or just comment? They just comment they whether just or not comment. it meets the plan of conservation so it's only advisory. and development for the state. So, so but we have it's a it's a thirty day referral period. Does that mean that hearing. once an advisory is in, we still have to hold a public hearing to make this text change? Yep. Yeah. But once it, once you do it, you do it. It's done. And we could always modify this, but at least for now, we'll get it in the books. Well, I'm also concerned that we don't want to not attract some of the development that we would like to have in the town. So I understand that, but um, there seems to be a lot of people that are very concerned about any large big box coming back in and you know, without a public hearing. I think that's what the citizens want. They want the public hearing. They want to be able to, t to talk to the, the aspects of the application, wh whether or not there's going to be traffic or noise or disturbance to neighborhoods. So, and this seems to be like the cutoff for a lot of the places, a lot of some of the towns, the 200,000 square feet. I'm just saying we, we, we could go on, we could do nothing right now and try to continue to come up with regulations, but we're going to be doing that in the fall anyway. Uh, I want to back up. Karan, if I can? Yeah. If I can. can I, maybe I can answer some of your questions very, because you weren't here last meeting. Yes. So if I don't mean to interrupt, but give me a minute. And let me just read something to you, because this might answer all your questions. Take your time. Just to let you know where some of us are coming from. Yep. Um, Special use permit, which is kind of what we're advocating, and I'll read to you. Um, again, I'm going to I'm going to borrow from Mr. Bars because I'm not going to reinvent the wheel here. I think he articulated this perfectly. Um, with a special use, you can weigh in on such factors as it is compatible with the neighborhood. Does it generate too much traffic? 
Does it, uh, is there sufficient utility capacity? Things of that nature come into play. The change also means that large warehouse proposals, or any large building, I hate to use warehouse, I hate to just say that, it's unfair, will be subject to public hearings, similar to what we went through before, so we don't have to vote among ourselves. It's auto, it would be automatic, so the public has a say. And the commission can use um, resident feedback because of the public hearing to require changes to, in the plans to address the concerns of residents and board members. As you know, in a site plan review, we don't have that quite that flexibility. With a special use permit, which requires a public hearing, means that we can then have a little more influence into their plans as we go forward to, um, I don't want to say protect our neighborhoods, but uh, have influence in, in, in development in those industrial areas. So hopefully that answers some of your concerns or questions of where we were coming from. Please. Right. I was going to back up into 200,000 square feet is uh, 100 feet divided times two. All right. So the size of the building is fairly small here. So therefore, the size of the lot required, given the setbacks front, side, back, maybe two acres at the most. Three acres, four acres. So I'm trying to picture how big, uh, how many acres would I need in order to have a two hundred. What I'm driving at eventually is I don't want to scare away, I don't want to discourage development because I think that's part of this commission's charge to not discourage development. We do want development. So if it's a two-acre parcel, given the setbacks and what have you, and some uh, hypothetical square footage of 200 square feet building, uh, do I need a 50-acre parcel? Do I, I can come up with a number. But what I'm saying is, is this realistic from the land perspective that we can anticipate or put together two or three or four lots together in order to make? Last part of it, do we want a max size so that beyond that we said absolutely no. This seems to be a minimum size, a 200. Well, I think we were, if I, if I may, please, anyone else can please jump in, mm -hmm. please. I think we were staying away from a max size because, again, we don't want to discourage right. development here. So there was, that really was not the key here. The key here was just to open up the avenue so that we had automatically a public hearing and where we would have more input, I'm trying to find the right term here, in, into the process and just a site plan review. Right? So I, I th we think we were trying to be very careful. And it, if I can, I would like to you know, advocate at this point that we allow staff to draft this up so that we then can proceed. As I think as Ms. Witten as, as staff said, we can always go back and change it if we find it's not working correctly. And we're going to be looking a lot of stuff after POCD in January, and we can relook at this again. Staff has also, I think, indicated that at this point in time, we don't know of any, you know, can that could change tomorrow, as we all know, right? Someone can come in, but at this point in time, there's nothing in the pipeline that would probably fall into this bailiwick. Um, but I, that, that's just my personal opinion as your chairman. I would suggest that we move forward keeping an open mind, we can always go back and change it uh, later if it's not working, st 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 if I may. If I, if I might, yeah. um, we, if, if, if it's um, per the commission's decision, if we move forward with this tonight and send it to Krog, when we have the public hearing, we can try to have some of that information that you're looking for, Karan. You know, maybe a demonstration is, so okay, here's a 200 square foot parcel or building here's the setbacks that would be required and here's you know how much parking they'd be required and so we could try to come up with some sort of um, a, a fake site plan that would demonstrate how much land acreage would be required you know all right and thank you Mr. Holinsky? I think uh, from my opinion I, I think it's important that we reiterate that we're not trying to be prejudicial to any large buildings here. We just want to have some control over yeah. where they're going, what they're doing, 
you know, that, that kind of thing so that we don't encroach on our neighborhoods in a negative manner. You know, uh, we're all for good business and, and large business in our area, in our town. And, and I think that's it's important to realize that, as I said, we're not trying to discriminate against large business here or any business. We'd like to encourage that, but we need to have some type of control, I think, to protect our neighborhoods. And that's that's the way I see it. Commissioner Lamo. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just a couple of things. I think last meeting we were on a consensus of 250,000 square feet when we were talking. We were looking at another community. Was it Windsor? We yeah, have Windsor. We have it was 250, and I thought we were going to model Windsor's. that. We were talking about modeling that just to throw that up. We know we went. I, I think the number was out there. I don't yeah, think Windsor's there was 200, ever 000. a consensus. Was it 200? Yeah, yeah. Windsor's 200, I thought we talked about 250. I mean, no. a decision. No. The okay, and. Um, I think the discussion that you know Karen was having and Commissioner Lewinsky, we have to make sure that we have a balance. We have to keep a, keep in mind, and because we don't want to shift taxes to the homeowner, sure. and make sure we have sure. good, solid businesses. And, and like I said last meeting, as a as a body, we have a great opportunity coming up. You know, to fix any of these things that are going on in our zoning, we have the PLCD. We're going to have the regulations to look at. So again, I think it's a great opportunity, but we always have to keep in mind a great balance of residential and business so sure. we can have a nice, stable tax base. Thank you. Sure. Well, if, if, if I can, I, I think one thing I will say, I'm, I'm not sure about Mr. Lefakis, but certainly Commissioner Holinsky and myself have really struggled many times with the balance of the tax yeah. and putting better municipal budgets. Yeah. Um, I know myself personally, I've probably spent more time doing that than probably anything else in a long time. <laughs> Commissioner Majumdar. Yeah, I think I understand the intent of the commission that we need a little more flexibility in the approval process in the public hearing. Is the language of 200,000, therefore we need special permit versus less rigorous site plan review. Is that going to discourage me, the third party developer, who doesn't understand the intent of the commission? So the language that we put together in the draft, no, is no. it going to show somehow that our intent is, hey, come and see us. We'd love to help you rather than, hey, don't bother coming here. I don't, I don't know, crime. I mean, yeah. personally, I think if someone's going to put a 200, 300, 400,000 square foot building, they're not going to be deterred about yeah. coming through a special yeah. use permit, to be honest with you. Yeah. Now, maybe if they're putting a 50,000 foot they're building, maybe. Okay. I mean, they're, they're professionals, and they have, prof as you know, you as you well know, they have professional engineers, and they're used to this in many communities. Yeah. They're a lot, a lot tighter, I think, than Enfield, to be quite frank with you. I was looking at Amazon coming to Enfield. Yeah, yeah no. <laughs> Before we go, we just, let me go to this side yep. first, and I'll come back. Yep. Anybody else on this side? Nick, anything you want to add? Yep. No, I, I concur that um, I, I, I see this as the, perp, uh, the, the purpose of this to uh, provide transparency and an opportunity for the public yes. to participate in this, not to discourage business. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, well put. Commissioner Lyman? Yeah, just, oh, I'm sorry, Matt. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, just no I'll, I'll defer. Just to, just to touch on what uh, Karen was just saying about language, maybe staff can uh, reach out to Mr. Nelson, I think it is a community development, see if he has any suggestions because of the community development piece. We're all saying we don't want to scare anybody away. Maybe he may have some buzzwords or something and uh, see if he can want to add anything to how we're going to, how we're actually going to craft the regulation well i think that i think not to scare anybody we're all worried about I think the regulation change would be pretty think, simple yeah may, maybe maybe if yeah. a couple of points might put some clarity on this and and ease your mind a little bit a special permit is still an administrative proceeding a special permit does not give a commission carte blanche right, right. to just deny things willy-nilly right. or to attach conditions that have no relevance right. to a legitimate valid issue that is under your purview and for which there's evidence in the record to support it. So I understand the concerns. Is 200 the number? I don't know. Is it 250? Who knows? But if we can get the process started, we could probably start that conversation and, and we'll get input from the public on the reg and they might want us to go higher or lower or whatever it ends up being. The beauty of it is that it's a commission sponsored reg. So 
while there's some statutory requirements in terms of referrals, the process, you own the process. It's your regulation application, your, your amendment application. So we don't have to worry about 65 days and 30 days and, and these kinds of things. But special permit is still administrative. Any action that you take has to be based on documented facts, legitimate in, in the record. And um, so I don't think we have any discomfort at the staff level that, you know, that, that the regulation would be abused in, in any way um, for purposes that it wasn't intended. And we're still going to do our detailed staff review. It's still going to get referred to the different departments and agencies. Traffic is going to, you know, report on their traffic concerns, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, we're, we're pretty comfortable with, with the use of the special permit process. Um, and let's, you know, let's get the application going. How big is the lot? Seven acres. Get the hearing, you know, see what kind of input we get, and then and then go from there. So the other thing is that a 200,000 square foot building is a five acre footprint. Five acre? 200, yeah, acres 43, 560, so builder's acres 40, so that, that's a five acre footprint. Right. Then you add in the setbacks, then you add in the parking, you add in whatever kind of impervious requirements we might have if we don't, and I don't think we do in the I zone. But, um, yeah, I you came up with somewhere around seven to eight acres, including. Yeah, parking. yeah you're talking eight, ten yeah. acre parcel land. And doing. apropos of what the chairman was talking about before, a lot of that area, Woody Road, et cetera, there's significant wetland resources and other resources there. So you, you factor that in. So, you know, the opportunities that are out there to, to create buildings. You know, four hundred thousand, five hundred thousand are, are probably pretty, pretty limited. I would think so. Two hundred seems like a fairly reasonable number um, to me. So yeah, that's exactly what I was doing. I was just yeah. coming up Thank with you. a square footage yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. and some setbacks and what's the. Yep. Yeah. Sorry. Thank so, you. Yeah, seven, eight acres, yeah. ten acres. Mm -hmm. Yes. So is there a consensus at least have staff move forward and give us something for the next meeting or move at least uh, we'll go ahead staff what, what would you suggest we do at this point well what i'd like to do is send the proposed changes to Krog. Krog. <clears throat> get the that, process that started as, it's basically just a modification to the yeah. use table yeah yeah it's basically what it is <clears throat> pretty much and then we, we still have a lot more discussion we have to yeah. have public hearings so just sure. just gets the process going is that I'm not going to do a vote. I'm just looking for yep. general consensus from everyone. Sure. Yep. Yep. If there's a general consensus for you to proceed and move ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, have a great conversation, everyone. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, much appreciated. Thank you. Is there any correspondence? Any commissioner's correspondence? Oh, yes. Oh, no. Just commissioner correspondence. Yep, go ahead. Um, any word on when they're coming before us for the Elm Street corridor? Um, I think they're coming on the 30th. They're, they're coming on the 30th. Okay. All right. Thank you. I haven't gotten there yet. It's all right. Thank you. Director, and any other commissioner correspondent? No. Director of Planning Report? Yeah, no, no problem. <laughs> Actually, they have a really nice new board up in the office. Um, so if anybody comes into town hall, please, if you, if you don't mind, I'm making the invite. <laughs> please stop up and take a look. They have the you know, old, you know, new layout, new board. Yeah, yeah. It's really, they did a nice job. It's a pretty good idea. Yeah. So um, items to be received are SPR 1895-238 Shaker, which is basically they want to actually do a curb cut. Remove. Actually, remove a curb cut. Um, we should have the traffic impact study presentation on June 30th. Um, hold on, next picture. Uh, public hearing 3040MA, which is a map amendment or uh, zoning change. So it's a zone change for 1297 Enfield Street from HR 33 to SDD, which is the Felician Sisters. We would like to open the public hearing on the 30th, assuming that we might need to keep it open for the next meeting. Um, SBR 1898, 95 High Street, which is just a restaurant addition. 
SBR 1897, oh, that one's incomplete at this point, and SBR 1895, which is 238 Shaker. Let's see what that is. Do you know what that is? You just talked about that. That's the curb cut. Oh, that. Oh, okay. It was in two places. Okay. So, um, aside from that, um, uh, Cheryl Eckenroth, who is our administrative assistant, uh, is leaving the department, but moving up and going to be the uh, executive secretary for the town manager. Mm -hmm. So once again, we are short staffed. <laughs> <laughs> Story of my life. <laughs> So, hey, but I'm extremely happy. Out? Pardon? How do you manage to chase them all out? I don't know. I'm really, really <laughs> starting to get a complex. <laughs> but um, um, I'm extremely happy for her, and I know she's going to do a great job for them. But now we need to find a new Cheryl. Yeah. So that's about it. I mean, we're just we're just busy. So. So we are going to be getting the Felician sisters application. It looks like um, in the next meeting. Isn't that the zone change? That's, that's the zone change it, that it, I just start that process and um, you know just keep Congress in your mind that we do not want to have any meetings in August so yeah. um, <laughs> well, which is why we want to right. at least open the hearing right. on the 30th right. and we don't have a whole lot of applications for that date at, you know especially large ones so um, we'll have the traffic impact study presentation and then we could and then we'll also have the um, public hearing. And that traffic impact, that's that study that was done around the mall Around area. the mall, right. Yes. Yeah, so it's kind so of limited just to around the mall. what we've been yep. doing to date and where yep. we're moving forward from yep. here. And so I'll, I'll, take, I'll take the liberty before Commissioner Limo asks again, we still have not heard back from them if, they, if the mall people themselves. At this point, I don't think that they're going, they're, they, they might come for whenever we do the, the public meeting yeah. for that. And yeah. you know, when they come, you know, they're from out of state. They're from New York, so um, we will try to get them to come. Okay. Go ahead. Yes, on uh, um, that the, the next. So, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I'm just the next this way. Um, application. We were just talking about the Felician sisters, and you were talking about starting a public hearing and leaving it open. So if we don't meet in August, what does that do to? The, don't we have to take action in a certain amount of uh, days? We, we or still month? have July. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Okay. So we'll have three meetings. Okay. I didn't want to quite say that, but. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, when you mentioned Doc, I was like, well, where are we going here? Well, I was kind of, I didn't want to actually come out and say we You know, who knows? Maybe maybe they give this presentation and you're absolutely completely satisfied and everybody, they're, they're going to hold a public meeting on, as a matter of fact, here to the world. They're, I believe they're holding it at the senior center. I want to say the 15th. It's going to be an invitation out to the community so they, everybody could come and see their new master plan. So, Is that something as commissioners we should avoid? I would think so. I, 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 yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah that's a, Just that's like a last hard year, yes. probably yeah. hard you should, yes. not, hard you should yes. not be attending that because you're going to be given everything that they're, they're going to see. Absolutely. Go Send your wife the, or husband. Yeah. I, I think it's a good thing that they're doing a community reach out, though. I think yeah. that's. They've, no, they've done a, a lot thing. of work and. We've just I haven't, done the first the, time I heard it. No, they I just had their art meeting this week. Oh, I haven't. So, well, she just advertised it for them. <laughs> no, yeah. yeah, I haven't heard about it, but I think it's a good idea to do a community reach yeah, out. Yeah, so they're they're going to do that the outreach and this um, June fifteenth, right? Correct. Yeah. And once once they have that, then they will um, give us their master plan for the file. Okay. But they I, didn't want to disclose it. The master plan before then. I'm sorry to interrupt. Just just on a process point, I know you don't do this here, but it's done in many communities, and I'm not suggesting that you do it. But by statute, you have 65 days from the close of the public hearing to get, to take action on application. You typically do it the, the same night, and everything's all nice and, and written up and whatever. But with but with a substantial application, um, where you may want to discuss and deliberate on the record after the hearing's been closed. You know, don't feel bashful about taking your time to, 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 to do okay. that. You, right. the, the law allows for oh, it, okay. right. and don't right. feel obligated that you have to do it. Right. You know, right. That's, good. that's right. good. That's 65 yeah. days. I didn't know. That's good. Yeah. 65 after the closing of the hearing. Oh, right. Good. And you can get you can get an and you can get extensions exactly right. Yeah. Right. if the applicant's willing. So right. If the applicant's, I was just going to ask you, the applicant has to be willing. Yeah, extensions are up to the applicant. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, but yeah. it's so. to their benefit. 
Right. Well, it, yeah, it, typically most applicants won't deny a, a request for an extension. Yeah. <laughs> Especially at that point yeah, in the they're process. A little, they're a little more savvy <laughs> than, than that. So thank you. All right. Thank, thank you for that input. All right. Any other opportunities or unresolved issues? Nope. Commissioner Helinski. Yeah, I just was looking for an update. We had asked for larger zoning maps, I think, Commissioner Petronella and myself. And and My apologies. We'll have to look into that. Okay. Thanks. Any other opportunities or unresolved issues for anybody? You don't see me because you see me. Well said. Uh, then I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion made Second. by Commissioner <laughs> DeGray, seconded by <laughs> Vice Chairman Higley to adjourn. <laughs> Let it be noted that the evening's planning zone commission has adjourned at uh, 8 15. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Mr.